Hi, and welcome to another Scientology Outside of the Church podcast. I'm here with Quentin Stroud on Jonathan Burke. Uh, this is going to be season six, episode 11, and it's going to be on independent Scientology and the future, uh, which is something, well, we're in the future based off of all of the writings of uh, Mr. Hubbard's LRH, as we call him, all of his writings and everything pretty much ended around 1986. There was some stuff that came out in, up to 1991 with the, the technical volumes. So at the time we were looking at 286 machines, 19, 19 something K baud modems, <laughs> if that in the eighties <laughs> to the, to the early nineties. And uh, well, then the internet took place to kind of bring everybody up to speed. The internet kind of broke with america online i think i mean that was the closest thing we had to internet and that was still you were oh, yeah. calling calling on a modem and what 94 95 you started to hear about the internet and by 99 broadband internet was everywhere time warner cable had broadband i remember that was the first broadband connection i had in, in uh, clearwater so this uh, from that point on technology has advanced to the point to where we're at now with uh we've got ai and we've got full motion video video calling hardly anybody has a landline phone anymore all that stuff so the technology in the digital age in independent scientology and well just for everybody in general his perspective was very much a pre-internet thing and our perspective is who doesn't have internet in their back pocket. So this is pretty mm -hmm. important to getting things done. So what we're going to talk about I, is where does this stuff go in the future, right? Yeah, absolutely. And not only as it relates to technology, but also like um, electronic technology and things of nature, but also society has changed drastically, even in the last, I mean, even since the eighties, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Society has drastically changed. Um, I can't even think about, you know, if you remember MTV and you remember things coming out and they thought that was the the devil and Madonna, when Madonna first came out and it was like a whole yeah, big thing. Yeah, it was a big, 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 big deal. Yeah, it was right. very much a, she did that. And, and now we look right. at that and we go, damn, that's tame. That's tame, <laughs> right. So, I mean, even, even, even society has shifted such that, you know, independent Scientology and the future literally lends to every aspect of what's happening in our world, what's happening in our society. And I think that those of us who are really tapped into what's happening within independent Scientology, we can already see the writing on the wall. We can see the, the things unfolding um, as they are. And we are able to then, you know, kind of tap into that from a perspective of, of, of kind of seeing it through the looking glass. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we can, and we can move from that perspective. So I think it's going to be a really interesting topic. Well, the, 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 the interesting thing is, is that we're looking at what, um, gosh, 40 years to 86. So that's 36 years. Is that right? Yeah. 36 mm -hmm. years, uh, since he shuffled off his, his, uh, mortal coil and, uh, in three years, it's going to be 40 years. That's boy, that's a long time. I mean, we're getting close to, to half a century. And things have changed dramatically, especially with COVID, for example. Uh, the uh, learning management systems, you know, online learning. I mean, it was coming anyway with, uh, you know, the, uh, the College of Phoenix. Do your courses online. Get your bachelor's degree now. That <laughs> kind of thing. I mean, that, that sort of thing was going on. And then during COVID, I remember doing a search. I was looking for a different learning management system than what we had. And I, I was, and I don't get overwhelmed easily, but I was overwhelmed by how many business had, businesses had started up and were offering learning management systems where you could create online courses during COVID. There were mm -hmm. tens of thousands of these, these companies doing this and boy, they're not cheap either. So it's, 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 it's very much become the way to do things online. And that's where I'm headed with this. As far as, you know, independent Scientology in the future, 
online is the way to go. We had a brick and mortar org. We may have another brick and mortar org here in, in the very near future. But the thing is, is you can reach an awful lot of people that you would not be able to reach if you had a building somewhere in a town because right. you're limited to how many people are in that, that city, how many people want to drive two hours to come see you, so on and so forth. And this is something that it's not in any of the policies in, in, in Hubbard's policies, as far as the policy letters, there's absolutely nothing mm -hmm. about this stuff. And even, even the corporate church, they have online courses just like we do. Yeah. Now they're not pro courses like we do, but they, they have online courses and they're going to be forced to embrace that a lot more. Just given the fact that that is now the norm. Well, and, they, and they've said that it hasn't even really scratched the surface, like like the penetration of online coursework and people learning through online. It, it hasn't even really penetrated that deeply yet, believe it or not. So the truth of the matter is, is that I, I don't really see a reason why we're going to have a lot of brick and mortar uh, spaces outside of socialization, outside of socializing. Um, mm. I don't really see a, a, a real reason why we're going to have that. It's interesting because um, LRH talks about uh, the future in some of his, some of his writings. One I think is called the International City mm -hmm. uh, was a lecture he did back in uh, 1964, March of 20, March 24th, 1964. And it was pretty intense the way he saw this thing kind of unfold he called it international city but of course you know we can expand it even beyond that that's now it's an online city an online community online mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, that consists of people all over the world even right. within aogp and 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 i mean people all over the world you mm -hmm. know i'm i'm here in the philippines myself and able to be connected with with AOGP, be connected with uh, getting auditing, you know, uh, remotely. It's just so amazing to see where this all has gone. Yeah. And, and that's that's the thing is, is, well, you know, part of the reason why Hubbard did so many lectures is he went to all of the English speaking countries. You, know, you had you had the US, you had England, you had South Africa and you had Australia. You know, he, he never went to Japan because he didn't speak Japanese, though, you know, it would have been great if he would be able to do that. And and that's that's the thing is, is even online. We're we're somewhat limited, but that that restriction is is going away very quickly with with the advent of AI to where you can make the materials available to people in other languages. That's the thing that stops you know, the, the, the forward progress in the, in the corporate church for years has had a translation unit where they've actually had somebody else speak LRH's lectures in another language. And we are pretty much there now where you could take one of his lectures in his voice and it could replicate that voice, Hubbard's voice, uh, yeah. and he could speak Japanese and give the lecture in Japanese. And that's a project I'd like to work on in the very, very near future would be, be to, amazing. To, to get these languages in the, the, the top 12 languages and just say, okay, AI, go ahead and give me the, the, the briefing course in LRH's voice and let's, let's do it in the top 12 languages. And then boom, and then get that translated as well once, once it was done. And it will be very, very accurate. I mean, that you can. I've already toyed around with it, and I've I've gotten him to, to to talk, say something that he didn't say, and it sounded like like Hubbard. And I don't think he would be offended. Wow. Yeah. And there's, <laughs> and there's, that's that's really the direction that we're headed into the future, is because we have people all the time contact us from all you know, Italy. Uh, Spanish is a, is a primary way. Spanish is spoken all over the world. I mean, it's one of the, the mm -hmm. I think it might be the second most popular language outside of English, but there's varying degrees of it. There's a couple different South Africa or South, South America. There's, you know, you've also got Portuguese as well, but anyway, so this is one of these things with international city where, you know, you have all these different people 
from all over the world and you're under one umbrella. So this yeah. is a, a, a forward, the future forward type of thing. And right before we got on the podcast, I was also looking at uh, how to translate the materials because now with AI, you can get a much, much higher resolution of accuracy, which is key in translating all of the transcripts that we have for lectures, translating the tech volumes, the policy letters and everything into other language. I can, I can take a technical volume in about seven or eight minutes. It can translate that entire technical volume into another language. And then it cross checks it again to make sure that it's accurate. The only thing is you have to give it the lexicon of the words that aren't English words you know, like Ngram, for example, or, uh, oh, I don't know, what would be another one? Floating needle. In theta. In theta, in yeah. mist. Yeah, you know, some of our, our, our very, very esoteric concepts. But once you've taught it that, well, guess what? Now we can put the whole thing out in Spanish. There's never been a, a Spanish set of technical volumes. This is another thing that we're going to be seeing in the next year or so and into the future with AOGP. Well, I think LRH, too, um, he has some concerns. I mean, this was in 1964, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. He has some concerns about uh, things that made our society more dangerous and more problematic. So I do believe, I mean, this is totally speculative, but I do believe that he might have also expressed some concerns about the way uh, technology has infiltrated uh, our lives and our pockets, you know, and mm-hmm. everybody has a device attached to them and the whole bit. I think, that, you know, even everything he said about radiation, you know what I mean? He, like, I think that he would have just been so um, uh, vocal about, you know, just the way things have uh, matriculated over the years. Uh, also, too, just with the way information is being able to be. Yeah. Uh, changed and fake news and you know whatever whatever it's like it's like there's a lot of lies being told yeah and and a lot of untruths it's interesting that you mentioned this because it was just two days ago that i was um watching one of my my weekly updates on ai and one of the pitfalls of, of of the the ai technology itself is uh, Mr. Beast uh, had somebody spoof him in a an AI video, and, and, and a lot of our listeners, it's obvious to me based off of what we've done on podcasts and things like that, and the surveys that have been been done outside of AOGP, that very very few people really know and get what the potential right now at this very moment of AI is, and that is. Mr. Beast had somebody spoof him in an AI created video. It was his face, his voice, and it said that he was offering 10, I think it would, don't, don't quote me on this, but he was offering 10,000 iPhone 15s for like a dollar or two, something like that. And he got word of this and then subsequently wow. immediately put out a video saying, this is not me. And it's on Twitter. It's on Twitter that, that, that somebody did this and, and you could see that it wasn't quite perfect, but I mean, compared to what it was three months ago when they were doing AI videos and what it is now, it is stunning how quickly you can, um, what's the word, what is the word where they, they put somebody else's face on somebody else's face? Like a, like a, Um, like a dub, not dub. Yeah, but it's you know it's dropped in and and it's somebody CGI else. It's a, it's a deep know, yeah. yeah, it's deep fake. Deep fake, deep fake. Yeah, yes, yeah they right. did that with Bill Hader and Tom Cruise, and you, you yeah. and you just go, what the? And they're using it in movies. I mean, I just watched the Indiana Jones, the the most recent Indiana Jones, and they took Harrison Ford's voice now, and they they took Harrison Ford's face back in the eighties, and yep. I'm not kidding you. It, I mean, it was a fraction. I could, it was just like, mm, that's pretty goddamn good. Just you can tell there's just a little something. 
Well, and I also wonder if how much of it is we know that how he looked in the eighties and we know how he how old he is now. So some of it is like your mind's like, I know that he don't look like it now. But imagine if a twelve year old saw that would he be able to say that's not Harrison Ford? You know what I mean? Like we know how Harrison Ford looks. Yeah. Yeah. But it was good. It was good enough that, I mean, it's gotten to the point to where it was good enough that my, my belief was suspended and that's, that's all yeah. you have to do. Once the belief is suspended, you, you okay. Then that's why a good story is a good story. If, 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 if you can suspend the person's disbelief, you've got them. And this is the point is just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. We've already run into PDFs where if you didn't know better and you hadn't read the material, like Fundamentals of Thought, for example, things have been changed in these, these PDFs and Fundamentals of Thought and people have put them back on the internet and anybody who wasn't any wiser would never, ever know, the hardest thing to spot is a missing this, they would never, ever know that these documents have been altered. That's scary. Right. That's well, and, and that's why to pay attention to. Totally. And that's why I think that independent Scientology and particularly with ALGP, how much we seek to to maintain the original documents, the original text, the original yeah. releases. Like that why that's so important because it it's it's a big deal when somebody goes in and changes something and deep fakes it or dubs it or mm -hmm. makes it their own. I think they came out with a song. Uh, Drake said it was Drake coming out with the song. Yeah, it wasn't I remember Drake that. Making. Now he's mm -hmm. suing people about it. It's a whole big thing. So I, I love the fact that that keeping the authenticity and the originality of the creation is so important because it actually gives you what you need to know in order to to move forward in life. So w when LRH talks about this in International City, he he goes in to talk about how like these programs and these things that are coming out, these things that are, that as he foresaw it, it's almost kind of prophetic because he talks about inflation. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is again in 1964. He talks about inflation being such a big deal. And he talks about it, how, how rampant it is even back then. Now we already know, right. We already know how inflation has affected us. Um, and he talks about why inflation is, what it, where does it come from? What does it have to do with uh, people being able to be uh, prosperous in our society? And, and, and we, how, how do we, as independent Scientologists, beat, let's just start with that. How do we beat inflation? So independent Scientology and the future, we know that things are going to be shifting financially, economically. How do we beat that? Well, I mean, when he wrote this, gas was significantly cheaper than 25 cents a gallon, petrol, 25 cents a gallon. And we're looking at in, in the Western part of the U.S. right now, over $5 a gallon. No, somebody oh. just said it's seven. Is that, okay. Somebody posted on Facebook right. today, seven Now, dollars. you know, there, it doesn't matter because the price is the price. But, you know, a, a, a large portion of that is the taxation that's going on inside that and that has a lot to do with inflation but the way you keep inflation down is you know, it's almost a knee-jerk reaction for anybody that knows anything about business you just got to keep your overhead down how do you mm. keep your overhead down well you go virtual yeah. you don't have any choice <laughs> you Revoked. go virtual how, you know i mean our our org in kansas city it was two thousand dollars a month for twenty eight hundred square feet, and that was cheap. That wasn't in 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 prime real estate territory or anything like that. That was up by the airport. That's two thousand dollars a month. That's twenty four thousand dollars a year, versus having your own server for one hundred thirty dollars a month. It doesn't take long. Yeah, but it's it's taken us years to develop that online that online presence. And, and get everything there because the the amount of data i mean you know hubbard was one of the most prolific authors on the planet to date not just in science fiction but in 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 everything he did were millions mm -hmm. upon millions upon billions of words and converting that into verified usable things on courses um and in session when you're taking somebody in session remotely in remote auditing you're going to be using those same materials so 
you know, the, the accent has to be on having the correct technology for keeping Scientology working. It's got to be accurate. It's got to be movable and, and, and it's got to be what it was supposed to look like. That's why we use as much as we can. We have a lot of the first printings of the books. In some cases we have the, the manuscripts with LRH's handwritten signature on. Them. So these, these things haven't been altered. And this is the part of the basis of independent Scientology having the correct technology where the church has to change their books every 20 years. They keep altering it. They keep altering it. It's that, that rumor line kind of thing. So they're falling away from it because they can't keep a hold of this stuff anymore. It's not like in the near future. No, they've been doing it for that long because the copyrights have ended up. So having the correct technology, having it available online, keeping the overhead down because of inflation. I mean, and then with the AI thing, things, things are just now going to be changing. Every month, things are going to get more and more and more interesting on this because you can do so much with AI and you can get things done that we weren't able to get done before. Yeah. I mean, just in the last couple of months, I've been able to put stuff in AI that I, I was never able to do before. And you can search this, you can search things in our, our on our AI platform that you could never ever search before, which is like LRH's lectures and put them together with the 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 technical volumes. It's really amazing what we're we're able to do now. So well and it sounds it sounds to me like what you're really putting in is what LRH talks about when he talks about production, because of course he talks about inflation being a, a product of too little production, right? So when there's too little of a product in the environment, the price goes up, right? Supply and demand. We, we know how that works, right? If mm -hmm. the demand is high, but the supply is low, price is going to be high. And so we see these prices going up because of uh, uh, production, Issues. Right. It's like there's too little production, he says. Mm -hmm. uh, and so by us as independent Scientologists really focusing in on getting our product out, like really increasing and amping up production, you know, I think in the affluence action affluence formula, I think it says something about cutting off any wasteful actions. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, cutting out any cutting out any wasteful actions, things that don't produce Right. And what that's going to do is that's going to help us beat inflation, because then when we have a lot of product out, we have more product out, we have more things flowing, we have more uh, uh, currency, as it were, flowing, mm -hmm. you're able to um, stave off inflation in a certain way. I think it's interesting because in, in this in this future that we're headed into, you know, we talk a lot about technology making our jobs and our lives easier mm -hmm. and 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 the result of that is somebody is not working the same way right mm -hmm. so factory workers or whatever I, I just found out now they have this thing on 60 minutes i saw it uh 3d printing of houses they can print yeah. a whole house in like two weeks you yeah. know just printing up with the with the concrete you know, spitting it out. Yep. It's fantastic stuff. So now, now we have people, we have robots and AI and all this stuff producing. That means then our personal time, our self uh, being applied to production has to change, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how, how do we, how do we apply ourselves to being more productive? What are we producing? What are we being more productive doing? What does that look like? Well, interest, interestingly enough, I mean, it, part, of, part of the problem with, with inflation is, is, the, is the only way to get around it is to cut, cut costs. And the, the best way that you can cut costs is, well, in, like in, in our, our situation, is, is to go virtual and how you can make things a lot more efficient. So if you can go in session from your home in Pakistan, and your auditor is in South Africa. Well, we're, we're definitely cutting some corners because you're not having to pay for the overhead of yeah. a brick and mortar building, the insurance, all of the things that go in it, going back and forth there, that sort of thing, flying there, you know, and that's, it's, it's amazing how much money you can save people. We chart, we can charge so much less than the church 
because we don't have all these gold filigree things and this handcrafted furniture. And, you know, I mean, they've tried to make everything look like the Catholic church. That's, that was my realization is it's, it's this it's to the nines kind of a thing. And LRH says, there's no need for that. Functionality is fine. Yes. People judge us by our mess, but it's a lot easier to create really nice, informative, usable websites that have the functionality of everything that you need. I mean, if we, if we had, we had 20 people doing co-audits, okay, we could have a co-audit space on our website where we could see mm -hmm. everybody co-auditing in a Zoom instance. We have that capability. All we need is the people to do it. And so you can watch these co-audits just like they used to do when, when LRH would be doing the ACCs. And, and if anybody has a question, they raise their hand. Well, you can raise your hand on Zoom. And you can see what's going on. If your TRs are funky, something's happening. You can control that. And these people could be all over the planet doing this. Yeah. But they're all in the same virtual room. And we can, we can handle this sort of thing. We can do this right now. All it takes is the interest. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, that's... Well, well, I that's what the future holds if if people want to do it because we have the capability to do it. We're already doing online auditing and have been for years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I well, I think, I think you, or not. Well, I was going to say, you kind of lean into it where, because obviously the conversation went into like auditing because my question was with if, if, if our jobs, I'm using jobs in air quotes, our jobs are easier. This gives us more personal time. They get, this gives us more free time. This gives us more time with our loved ones. This gives us more time to do whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. What are we as independent Scientologists focused on? Well, in my opinion, I think that really focusing ourselves on personal development, focus ourselves on study and training, focus ourselves on the training side of the bridge, focus ourselves on getting in session if if that's kind of what you're leading into. The idea is, is that if if we don't have to work so hard tilling the soil yeah. of the daily grind, yeah. now now we're tilling the soil of our own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Now we're tilling the soil of our own spirit. We're digging deep and pulling out the roots of our trauma and pulling out the, you know, whatever. We're right. going in session and we're dealing with us. Mm -hmm. And so this then brings about this ideal scene that we as, as independent Scientologists really see us having. Like we get to see now the better, the, what is, I think, uh, what is it called? Um, the angels of the angels of our better nature, or something like that. That um, um, Abraham Lincoln said, "The angels of our better nature." We get to see the better parts of ourselves emerge because we're not so focused on survival in the economic sense. Because our our lives are easy. We got AI to generate those emails and you know do this and the other. Absolutely right, right, yeah. It, well, you, you can you can. The accent is on. What's what's more important instead of dealing with all of these tertiary things, you're you're getting on with the show and you can get a lot more done in a shorter period of time. And then that it, it, it is absolutely obvious that that is the case with what the future holds. I mean, you, you I mean, how many businesses have been sticking with the online aspect of it? I mean, just recently. And Apple's been having some trouble with this, but the uh, Apple Computer Corporation with COVID, they had a, a significant number of their executives and uh, middle management working from home. And a lot of the, and this is, this is really funny, a lot of the, the people who were working from home, they liked that they were working from home and they didn't have to do the commute and everything like that. So when they said, look, you got to come back, we got to, we got to have you back here at Apple. They quit. They quit because their lives had transformed so much because right. they were able to work at home. I mean, you quit a corporate job at Apple because they want you to come into the big circular building with a park in the middle of it, surrounded by trees. And you can't do that. I mean, you look nope. at that and you, and you just go, wow. I could, they, this is, this is, this is the forward future on this whole thing. It is right. it's because you can do it at home. And it's not just because you can sit in, in, in your sweats and have a nice shirt on, on camera. <laughs> it's, it's just, 
is so much easier and you can get so much more done. You can make dinner and have it going on in the background between sessions, you know, or something like that. I, yeah. it's, it's really it simplified things. Or like when we talked about the second dynamic and we were talking about uh, go back and listen to the podcast on the second dynamic and love. We talked about having a partner. We talked about having somebody who, while you're in session, getting <laughs> fixed or whatever, getting your, getting your mind right, somebody else is in the kitchen making dinner so that when you come out of session, you got meal prepared and, and everything is ready and vice versa. Like these things are so, so wonderful that it really, really can create the life the lifestyle that we desire. You know, it's interesting because we also talk about, you know, how technology has changed the way we do our services as independent Scientologists. What about ideal orgs? Because of course, you know, under DM, um, ideal orgs have become the thing to go after, right? Because it's like, yeah. obviously it's, it's a real estate, it's a real estate concept, but do you think that ideal orgs would be different knowing what an org could look like now versus back then? I would say resoundingly yes. I mean, mm. you, you you look at it, this is this is from the data series, and, and this has been highly not the policy letter itself, but the these the context of data series 40, the ideal org, which is you know, this is what the, the corporate church is using is as their excuse yeah. to become a real estate acquisition firm and get suckers to pay for real estate for them and then charge the orgs rent in order to be there. Okay. So that's, that's their ideal org out of context sense. But LRH says, he says the ideal org would be an activity where people came to achieve freedom and where they had confidence they, they would attain it. Okay. We've achieved that as AOGP online. <laughs> right. sense. Done. Okay, next, Good. it would have enough space in which to train, process, and administrate without crowding. Check. It yeah. would be located where the public could identify and find it. This is going to be pedantic, but it's really funny when you when you, when you do it. It would be located where the public could identify and find it. Um, one word. Google. Google. <laughs> <laughs> it would be busy looking with staff in motion, not standing about. Yeah, there's always something new on the website. We have we have six different websites that we use every day for our public and that they have access to. So yeah, it's it's busy. It would be clean and attractive enough not to repel its public. Check. The design, the 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 college, the learn worlds, the way we the way everything is set up, like it's such a good theta environment. Absolutely. Right. And it says the org, org board would be up to date and where the public could see who and what was where and which the staff would use for routing and action. Well, I can't say check to that because we don't have our org board up for obvious reasons, nor will we. If you have a question, you can ask me about it, but I'm not interested in giving, quote unquote, the enemy any ideas. So that one will stay private and I don't have any problem. I don't have any compunction on that saying it's going to stay private. It says... A heavy outflow of letters and mailings would be pouring out. Well, I'm going to have to say check on that because our, our, our prominence on Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Brave, all of these sites, mm. is, we're, we're right up at the top in, in as many different SEO categories as you, as you can imagine. So well, if, also depending on where, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you know, letters out, you could say, well, that's emails. Mm. I was going to say, dep dep depending, on, depending on where you're listening to this podcast, we're ramping up conversations on a uh, podcast on YouTube. Of course, if you're listening, you know, like Spotify or some other places, or whatever, wherever you listen to this podcast at, you're hearing all this straight from, you know, ALGP itself. This is the conversations that we're having. But also email listings, we're going to be getting that up. That going to be wrapping up very seriously, making mm -hmm. sure that people are staying connected there. If you go into the college, there's, you know, uh, direct messaging and uh, uh, announcement board or, or general board where everybody can, you know, chime in on different conversations and stuff like that. So there is outflow heavy yeah. outflow yeah i think is the first part of it right there's and definitely it, heavy outflow yeah and the, and the and it's important to note that letters and mailings in the 80s in the 70s and the 60s and earlier okay that was how this we did 70, that you know, this is, yeah. yeah this is this is before fax machines and stuff like that and and letters and mailings it's different now 
And you have to look mm-hmm. at that in that context. So it's, it's a, it's a brave new world. And he says, the next thing he says, answers would be pouring in check. Auditors yes. would be auditing in div for Hubbard guidance center and qual would be rather empty check. Supervisors would be training students interestedly in two-way calming all slows. Check. Sometimes I have more things I need to check out from our online students than I have hours in the day, but I do get it done and I stay up late at night answering their questions, being on Zoom, you know, doing their practicals and everything with them. So we got we've got that handled. The HCO area secretary would have hats for everyone and checked out on everyone. Well, I mean, you know, we don't have a lot of staff, but our people are extremely knowledgeable. So check. There would be a pool of people, and you do, and that's the other thing. Which to to your point earlier, with the way that we do things, and the way that other people can do things, and I'm I'm putting the challenge out there right now. I want to see more organizations like AOGP get the show on the road and do this. And we view ourselves as the central org. You want to do the same thing? There is no such thing as competition in the future when it comes to auditing people getting people trained. There are over 8 billion people on this planet. And every day there's over 200,000 bodies born every single day on this planet. So there's no such thing as competition and there needs to be other people out there doing this because we can't do it alone. And it's very, very important that things can get done with a, with a, with a, a much smaller crew, like a skeleton crew. LRH talks about org program number one, where there's only three, executives and they handle everything and online virtual things they they again to your point earlier they consolidate so much developed traffic that you can have an influx of all this stuff going on and it might take you ages to do if it was people in bodies in a brick and mortar org where it's systematic when you've got emails and you've got telegram and you've got our the college with our our instant messenger and a social media page and so it doesn't take near as much time to handle an exponentially larger amount of information coming in and going out because it's all systematic. So it, you can get a lot more done with a lot less people is my point. He says yeah. th- there would be a pool of people in training to take over new admin and tech posts. We're getting there really, really quick. The staff would be well paid because they were productive. Check. The public divisions would be buzzing with effective action and new people furnishing a torrent of new names to central files. That's why we're putting stuff on YouTube. That's why we're putting it on TikTok, Instagram, boom, 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 boom. And it's, it's getting out there quick. PCs would be getting full grades to ability attained for each, not eight minutes from grade zero to four, but more like 30 processes. It's actually more than that. And they would be leaving with high praises. Check. Students would be graduating all on fire to audit. Check. One could look at this ideal org and know that this was a place a new civilization was being established for this planet. Yes. Ding. A new civilization is a being established. A new way of doing things. A new... Uh, oh, it's so good. And he says, lastly, this is before the next page, a thousand or more actions that made it up would dovetail smoothly one with another. This is what's happened since 1986 up to 2023, almost 40 years later. Everything is streamlined to where you can get a lot more done across the planet. You could be uh, on one of the outposts in Antarctica now with Elon Musk's internet, Starlink. Anywhere remote, Mm -hmm. you can have broadband internet out in the boonies including Antarctica or the North Pole or, you know, in the Himalayas, in Tibet. There is no cut comm line anymore as long as there's internet connection. So this this is where the future is, is headed. Like it or not, we have to adapt because if you don't adapt, you get the church. You can have an ideal no. org and you can spend all kinds. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, guys. I love I love the Scientologists. No, no, I, I, I love, didn't expect that. I love the Scientologists in the church and everything like that. There's a, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of wonderful people in there. They're just a bit misguided and PTS to upper management. And, and that's the old way. That's the old way. Other than the social aspect of pressing flesh, everything else is better moving to a a virtual, a, a, 
a virtual online org. Now, here's the other interesting thing with Apple and Facebook coming up with the VR aspect. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let me tell you something. So when when I first when it was first announced about the metaverse and da, 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 my first thought was how how much of a game changer this would be mm-hmm. when it comes to auditing and and independent Scientology because I was like that that's what we need what we need is where people all over the world can come in be a part of this virtual room you know I'm I'm a bit of a Star Wars fanatic and if you remember. Yeah, if you remember, they had the Jedi Council, right? Yeah. And whenever Mace Windu was out on assignment or wherever, you know, Yoda was somewhere on assignment, they would they would beam in, like, you know, uh, with the little hologram thing. And mm-hmm. the little hologram would be talking, you know, oh, you know, we're going to do something about the Jedi. And I'm like, yes, I want to be in the room with the mm-hmm. masters, mm-hmm. the people yeah, doing this kind of is. work. Yeah. Yes. And so I feel like we we, we as... Uh, free thinkers, we as the theta solver, we as those who are doing the self work in order to adapt more quickly. I think even it says those who the best, the, the one who survives the best adapts, or something like that. Mm-hmm. The one who adapts the best survives, something like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it's like as we are adapting, as we are shifting, as we are becoming cause over all this stuff that's happening, we get to survive well into the future versus being the adverse effect of it. And mm-hmm. I think that that's what a lot of people are afraid of, you know, even with AI, da, da, becoming the adverse effect of, to your own cause. Mm-hmm. But we cause it, and now we're afraid of becoming the adverse effect of our own cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out here, this is, this is not a postulate, it's a prediction. Um, I, I'm going to say sooner rather than later. The potential, I'm not saying we're going to do this or we're not going to do this. The potential, and it sounds like science fiction, the potential for you to sit down either with a virtual headset on or just on your computer, sort of like we're doing on Zoom right now, to sit down with an AI and go in session with an AI. Okay? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay. And it isn't going to be squirrely. It isn't going to be squirrely. Mm-hmm. It would be completely accurate to what LRH yeah. wanted in session. Because if you, you just wait and see what's going to happen with Apple and their AI, because Apple sits back and watches everybody and goes, okay, what are these guys doing? Okay. They're doing this, 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 and this okay, how do we do this better? And how do we take it up two or three levels? Apple is going to release an AI like chat GPT four, or you know, let's, let's just say, you know, let's, it's going to be in the next year to two years. They're throwing tons of money and they're sitting on a pile of cash. They're going to introduce an AI that is like Alexa, but is like you talking to another person. Okay. And it's going to answer yes. verbally. And with their, now that they're releasing the, um, the, the virtual headset and everything, and I'll be, I'm going to be one of the first adopters on that. And probably you are too, since you're a gamer and everything like that, you are going to be shocked at, and I'm not saying we're trying to replace reality. Let me make that perfectly clear. What I am saying is, is it's going to change the way you do things fundamentally with augmented AI and things like that. So you could sit down in front of basically Siri and you could sit down and you could get your rudiments for them. Yeah, I was going to say, because if you really think about it, right, the auditor is the listener. The auditor is a listener and compute, and this is one who listens and computes. Mm-hmm. The auditor goes over commands or questions, lists or whatever, you, whatever they're working with. And you're the one coming up with your own answers. You're the one coming up with your own truth, mm-hmm. right? This is not this is not an AI just telling you you have a mental health issue or whatever, like psycho, uh, psychiatry or psychology or whatever would have you think. Like this is you coming up with your own way out, mm-hmm. and the facilitation of that process 
of you doing it is you twinning up with someone or a a process in which to bring those truths to surface, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't see why it has to be a, another human being spending their time doing this with you for you, especially knowing that there's solo knots, there's solo auditing, especially knowing that there's all these other ways of doing things. So I, I just think it's going to be such a great future. Um, I don't know where we are on time, but I think that like we have really, really opened the door to like really broaching like what this independent Scientology has in store when it comes to the future that we're, we're seeing unfold. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it will definitely speed things up. And if you could sit down with a, with a, and, and I'm not saying that you know, there's any replacement for, for a Thetan in a body as an auditor or anything like that. I'm just saying it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And you can sit down either virtually with an avatar that understands everything that you're saying and has, has the whole entire LRH database of tech under its belt and knows how to respond sort of like C3PO. You know, if you were having a conversation with C-3PO and he tells you the odds on da 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 da, -da are this. Don't tell me the odds, 3PO. You know, that that sort of thing. But, you know, they're going to do it in a, in a tasteful way and they're going to have TRs and everything like that. And it can be done. And this allows, just like Elon Musk is doing, is he's creating, he's literally creating robots. We're probably looking at next year where the robots do the menial tasks. I'm not saying auditing is a menial task, but it sure would give me a lot more time to get Scientology, independent Scientology out to other people if I could I could allow a robot, quote unquote, to take somebody in session and it it and I knew with entire peace of mind that it was going to get the job done. And the person comes out with a raving success story on how C3PO took them in session and did their L eleven. Or L <laughs> ten. Yes. Let me tell you, is I, I, I've always said this, and what, what even attracted me to Scientology was that I've always believed that Scientology is a a, a future dated phenomena. Yeah. It's a future date, like it was. It was way ahead of its time. It, yeah. um, yes, it was. You know. LRH came in at the time that he came in uh, in a body and gave gave us this tech and and discovered this tech, pulled it all up together. Um, thousands upon thousands of lectures, books galore. Like there's so much that we have available to us, and now it's time to take it where it's supposed to go. And I believe that the future is waiting for us. So I'm super excited about this. Me too. Well, everybody, we hope you've enjoyed the podcast. We're going to start doing a 45-minute podcast format from here on out. Um, so we're going to call it a day on this particular podcast. And I'm very, very excited to start the Parascientology podcast, uh, which we're going to record three of tomorrow, or excuse me, on Saturday. And these will be very fun for the Halloween season coming up. So for Quentin Stroud and myself, we hope you've enjoyed this podcast and given you some things to think about. I hope we weren't too um, out reality for you, but things are changing way faster than you might think, given that AI is creating AI now. And um, I don't want to stop auditing anytime soon, but if I can get more people in session, we can get more people in session quicker. No, and, it, and it does it right, more power to it. So for myself and Quentin Stroud, we hope you've enjoyed the podcast and we will see you in the next installment. Namaste and we love you. Peace.